We're recording. It looks like Precious O might have dropped off. I think her internet is maybe yes. a little unstable today. Okay, well, we might just need to do this as a group. Sounds mm -hmm. good. Okay. Uh, all right, well, welcome to the Chaos DEI working group meeting. It's great to have all of you here. Today's August 24th. Um, looks like we have a relatively short agenda today. Honestly, it's good to be back. This is my first time back in a month. I wasn't here last week and then I had two weeks off uh, prior. So it's, it's good to see everybody. Uh, there's Precious, come back in. Um, so I guess the first thing is reviewing old metrics. I know that um, a number of people have been working on this. Elizabeth, maybe do you have some comments here? Yeah, um, so if you scroll all the way down, you'll see there's like a long list of all of them. Um, they're all finished, except for this one issue label inclusivity. And it looks like I had the wrong link there in the agenda, um, so I couldn't find it. But it looks like Precious said that she fixed it. So I think maybe I can fix that one up. Yes. OK, perfect. And then um, I will just make sure that that's um, OK in Markdown and I will drop a PR in. We'll get that merged and then I'll get you the full list, Matt, of all the um the link to the prs for all of those changes okay for your because you said you were going to do the transition trans yeah i can do yeah i can do the issue because oh. right now i think all these links go to just the google doc but i would think it's probably easier for them if we link to the pr so they can see the difference right yes okay yeah so basically here we are in the dei working group um so you're gonna just issue the PRs like against. Yeah. yeah. So if you go to open PRs right now, oh, okay. there's some in there. I was having Precious and Oma um, just do be the reviewers so they could kind of get credit for doing the work because they did all okay. the work and I just yep. the PR. So we'll just merge all those in now. I think they've they've looked at all those. So I'll go ahead and merge all those in and then um, do the in issue inclusivity and then I'll okay. link everything for you and I'll just send it to you and then you okay. can drop it in. And, and then, in. okay. So then these are there other merged issues already associated with these or merged yeah, here, yeah. I should say associated yeah. with these okay right yes um and then I put in here major versus minor you'll see um on that list before in the agenda um and I don't know if you want to tell them that the like hey here's some major ones that probably oh, need yeah. redone or, or here's them like however you want to do it code of conduct for a project yeah that was a major yeah I was surprised. Remember, I was like, that's the first, that was the first one that I looked at. And I'm like, this will be easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. It was not. No. <laughs> Turns out. Not at all. <laughs> not at all. So, so yeah, just yeah. like, I'll probably have that done maybe, if not the, by the end of today, early in the morning. And okay. then I'll just let you know when all that's ready. So then to me. So then is that everything? on this list? I believe it is. Okay, so could we, I mean. Well, the ones that needed the review, like okay. some of the, need, you know, okay. so. So precious, so I can like delete that remark, precious. Yes, on yes, this. yeah, all those precious. you can delete, yeah, yeah. Okay, I think that's it. Yeah, and okay. then I think you're gonna link to the GitHub or the Mark, the GitHub Markdown, right? And the links instead of the Google Docs, right? Yeah. So, I mean, we have, these are the- Oh, Google Docs. Oh, I see. Yeah. So I've split them out because we were overloading the column with like Google Docs and GitHub links. Gotcha. And so these shouldn't change because these are kind of different, like any PR will just That's... be themed right at that. Yep. That's and the so, single source of truth for the. Yep, and that's why I say it's like the definitive definition because yeah. I do think sometimes our links to the Google Docs they have a tendency of changing sometimes. Like if, well, like if you're doing a revision and you just start a new Google Doc, you know what I mean? 
So yeah. maybe that, that does end up changing a little bit. So, okay. Um, and then what I'm going to do too is, in addition to issuing the um, the issuing the issue to the translations team, I'm going to also create Google Docs for each of these. So I'm going to go, like, I'm just going to copy the markdown. OK. Whoops, that doesn't work. <laughs> Ta-da. Um, I'll get the right GitHub link, first of all. <laughs> uh oh, I'm wondering if. OK, so like, uh, I'm just going to copy all of this and create um, Google Docs for each one of them as well. Or you can, oh, that would be great. Or you can pull from that list in the agenda because those are all the Google Docs where we are were they? kind of doing work. Okay. But uh, yeah. Well, I was I was thinking yeah. I might it might make sense to actually go into the Chaos account, the Chaos, like not a, my own Drive account. Yeah, yeah, that and makes make, sense. Yeah, and I'll make a folder called like working groups. I, don't, I have to look at the folder structure that's currently in there. And then just make all the working groups and then just make all the focus areas. It'll just be a folder structure that follows what we have here. And it'll just be cleaner. Um, it will. Yep. Organized. Okay. Yep. yep. That makes sense. So that's kind of a longer arc that'll, that might take just a tiny bit of time. So, okay. Uh, so where are we here? Okay. Um, so. Gosh. Um, to finalize PRs yep. and merge. Um, and provide a list to all markdowns? Yeah. OK. Uh, do you want to the markdown files or the PR? Well, if it's merged, probably the markdown file. OK. Because I think that's easier to look at from a diff perspective, isn't okay. it? OK. OK. Because you can see the history of the document. Um, okay. And Matt G to issue in translations repo and then oh what am I doing Google um Okay. Okay. Good. Sounds good. Okay. Awesome. Um, why don't we, does anybody have any questions or comments with respect to reviewing the old metrics? And Precious and Oma, thank you for all of your amazing work. So Precious, I don't know if you're um, able to, to use your microphone right now, but I'm happy to turn it back over to you if you'd like to just lead in with the next item. Oh, hi, let me try again. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. <laughs> Thank you so much. I think most of all we need to do has been done. It's just remaining the interview campaign with underrepresented groups. I'm not sure. I, I, I hope Anita is here. Let me check. I feel like that's mostly her work. So she has better 
knowledge about it. But um, we've mostly, like, I think from the last call, we had like a bunch of people willing to help out with. Oh, yeah, Anita is here. Anita, would you like to talk about the interview campaign and progress in the last weeks? And... Sorry, I missed that. Oh, yeah, I was saying the last thing on the agenda is the interview campaign. And since you have like more on her it, so would you like to talk about that and tell us like the progress since last week? Yeah, sure. So, um, okay. I so what I'm doing right now is I'm um, trying to um, write down the underrepresented groups or identify what we call underrepresented groups because I see a lot of questions about that here. And I'm also curating the chaos um, metrics. So um, I put down the document, but it's not like put together right now. <laughs> Everything is just scattered everywhere. So I, I can't show that right now, but definitely. I'll add it in this um, doc. So I'm putting everything in one folder so I can share it with the team so everyone can see the document that I'm working on. But so far, I'm trying to work on the different underrepresented groups that we're looking at and what we term underrepresented. OK. I think that's cool. I was actually also wondering exactly how we yeah so aside that does anybody else have any questions or need clarity maybe for any towers i think we can ask that. i i have a question for anita so um do you want to start a doc or a spreadsheet or something as people have ideas of people we can reach out to like just to keep track of them, like if, if, cause I know someone who works for um, an organization focused on accessibility on the web. And I think they would be excellent to talk to about this. So like, where would I drop his name and contact information? Okay. I think I'll just, you can drop it in the doc for now, but I'll create a spreadsheet where we can put that. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anita. Does anybody else have any question? Maybe something to add, something that maybe we might have overlooked in the talk. I just had a, a quick follow up to Elizabeth's question, which was uh, thank you for creating that spreadsheet, Anita. Will that be linked to this document so that we can find it later? Yes, so um, every document awesome. that is relating to this project, I'll attach the links here. So everyone can just refer to it while going through this as well. Thank you very much. So are the are the contact the potential contacts are they people who would be interviewed? Is that the idea, or are there people that would help, like do the interviewing? So um, I I had an idea. So I feel like people that we should actually focus the interview on are people that cover amongst more than one underrepresented group. For instance, maybe you're um, from, you're a colored person with, um, who is also gay and is experiencing. Yeah, so like, if we're able to like track people that way, we'll get more answers than focusing on one particular person. But yeah, that was a, that's what I'm doing yeah, for this. I have something to say. I think uh, when we were defining underrepresented, there was this intent initially when we were applying for RTG that couldn't run Ogo on her system because of the size. I feel like that's also a metric we can, we can think about. Let me say, for people who have who don't have access to certain storage capacity, maybe they can't afford the devices that really large that they like, have really large storage capacities. I feel like that might actually be a metric that we could consider. Okay. Sure. I don't yeah, I don't I don't know if we have Elizabeth, if we have a metric that takes a look at like 
accessibility, you know, to to technology or accessibility to platforms? Just event accessibility is the only one okay. that I know of that we have developed. Um, yeah. But I feel like there's a whole world that in chaos right now, we don't necessarily have visibility into because um, we just don't have those people in our community. So like that, that would be one gap that I personally see is that I would want to reach out to someone that is involved in that community and does have real world experience of like, you know, what, what, the, what open source communities could be doing to help, help bridge that gap. And so that's something that I see, but to Precious's question, that's an excellent question is how are we defining underrepresented for the purposes of this? Um, and I don't, I don't know that we have defined that really anywhere. The, the I'm, outreach... I'm also, go ahead. Oh. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, thank you, Matt. Um, I'm also curious about that because along with a lot of the other, um, we do DEI instead of DNI, a lot of the DEI uh, aspects that we're looking at, we're also looking at role diversity and how to incorporate people outside of coders in that space because we have are into the open source space because uh, experience has led us to believe that we're more likely to find women and people of color filling those roles. Um, so we, we uh, want to make sure that uh, we can include those. And, and I think I might have a potential source for um, people to talk about who have limited accessibility. So I'm, I'm excited to hear that we're including that. So for those that don't know, Beth, I think you're still with IEEE SA Open. Is that correct? Yes. <laughs> okay, you're either muted or that was an obvious question. <laughs> it didn't require an answer. <laughs> Sorry. No, I, I apparently muted myself thinking I just had, but I hadn't. Um, yes, I am a contractor for them. Okay. And so, so it sounds like Beth, you might have potential people to talk to with respect to this interview. Is that right? Yes, definitely. I, I have some folks that volunteer with um, IEEE SA Open that I think might be good resources. And then I also have um, some people who might uh, might be good sources of other people to talk to. So not necessarily direct interviewees, but um gotcha potential connections so maybe this spreadsheet be like i'm sorry go ahead uh having the definition of what what uh how underrepresented is defined would be very helpful okay um i will create a spreadsheet for this and share with everyone You see, I just put that text there, Anita, like maybe you could just put that link right there and the spreadsheet could have maybe, I was at least listening to the conversation, maybe two tabs, one that would be potential people to interview and then maybe organizations or groups that might help with taking a look at the amazing work that you've done so far. Yeah. Uh Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, it looks like Anita also just dropped in um, a, a working doc for defining what those underrepresented groups might be. So she dropped it in the chat if you have, yeah, there you go. And like some of this is um, clearly you know, like North American based. I think those are some of the the categories, I guess, for lack of a better word that we would use in the US, for instance, but I don't know if we want this to be more global or how we want to do it. So totally up to Anita and whoever's running this project. Yeah, sure. So um, I'm still finding other, um, other 
persons or other groups that are still classified as underrepresented. I even found out that um, reti um, retirees and veterans are also underrepresented. I never thought of that. <laughs> but yes, I'm still finding more groups to add to this and see how um, they can also relate to the diversity and inclusion here. Anita, I might recommend that you take a look at some of the uh, ways that other organizations have kind of written this. So I know that Outreachy has kind of a defined set of um, a defined way of saying how they talk about underrepresented groups or participating in Outreachy. And I would imagine there's other organizations that might have similar text already written that might help. And I think sometimes it's good to just reuse what other people have done. So we can just point to that. You know, we don't have to redefine this every time as well. Okay. So I can, like, let me get the list. Like, outreachy. Yeah, so outreachy criteria or something like that. Eligibility rules is what they call it. So here, I'll put it in the chat. Thank you. Yeah. And then I'm trying to think of um, There is work that Nikki Stevens has done with open demographics that might be helpful as well. Also in the chat. Right. And I guess maybe my last question for Anita, did you have a like a time frame that you were hoping to to start interviews? No pressure. I was just curious. Okay, well, um, the last time we talked, we said we would um, span this across three months. So um, the first month for the uh, initial planning and creating of questions and all of the resources that we can share with the persons we're interviewing. Then the second month, we use it to interview. Then the third month, we use it to um, curate all of the um, reports from the interview. And... Um, Yes, that was what we discussed in the last meeting. Okay, and was the hope to start like in 20, what year are we in, 2023? This year, <laughs> yes, <laughs> okay. next month. So yeah, we're about to wrap up this month. So I'm trying to put together all those things to get okay. started next month, yes. Okay, gotcha, okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Anita. We appreciate you. Does anybody else have anything extra to ask her or are we done? Okay. I think that's the last on the agenda. Elizabeth, do you have anything extra to say? Matt? Yeah, I don't think so. Anybody else have anything? Well, if Ruth is available, and if you wanted to talk about your Twitter space, because that was last week, I think, or Wednesday, Thursday, I think it was after the DEI worker meeting. Yeah, sorry. I, I want to share with the, the DEI audit team later next week, but I think I should share here as well. Um, so uh, at Chaos Af, can everyone hear me? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I have some 
throat issues. But yeah, um, so we had the Twitter space last week. I'm trying to find the link, so I'll send it here because it was a recorded space. And I also converted it to get it to the YouTube channel. But we did have a link. Um, sorry, we did have a space um, with some speakers. Um, we All the speakers could not make it, but we had like two speakers that um, they are the founders of the Open Source Community Africa. So we we kind of chatted about like the different um, challenges, you know, uh, African open source contributors face. And we chatted it from a point of their experience with, you know, over uh, 10 years in doing open source in Africa. So a chunk of feedback was about um, access to resources, you know, not having access to um, resources to contribute, ranging from laptops, uh, internet access. Um, then another part was like about representation, which I, I really love this interview campaign we are we are about to kick off, which would really help with that, would un understand better about representation. So representation in the sense that um, when some Africans um, kind of find open source projects to contribute to, when they do not see their kind or people that could help them, that could help them uh, contribute better, it's it's really tough. Um, so uh, yeah, that, that was another, another point. So these were the two main points. Um, if I can remember on like access to resources, representation. Um, and then we also really chatted about um financial um like internships, paid internships, you know, um, like outreach, uh GSOD, Fukushima of Code, you know, how these internships have been really successful in Africa. You know, people have there. There are a whole lot of people that apply for these internships, and I I know even with the last outreach, we had a couple, a lot of, a lot of outreach applications here from Africa. So, yeah. So we did even chat about that. So that was that was the conversation mainly on those challenges. Aside from the usual documentation challenges, I I think it was really good that we had that space because. Um, we we have been only looking at you know the documentation challenges people trying to contribute but on access to resources and representation we haven't really really looked at that. Uh, I also adding up I also had a chat with um, I think Select connected me with Code for Africa I had a chat with them today and they also talked about um, financial aspects how they have been you know financially supporting people to contribute and create projects. So I mean code for Africa. Um to know oh, she code Africa. Gotcha. Yeah. And Selec connected me with Code for Africa. So I had a chat with them today. So yeah, so that that conversation was interesting. And yeah. So I, I have to say that I attended the space. First of all, I didn't know that it was going to be live. I thought it was going to be people typing like in Twitter. <laughs> I didn't know it was like a live conversation. So that was, uh, <laughs> I didn't know. I'd never attended a Twitter space before. <laughs> um, so, so, so that was, that was unexpected and awesome. Um, and then Ruth, I just have to say, Ruth did an amazing job uh, just kind of facilitating the whole thing over the yeah, course. Shout out to Omar too. Omar was yeah. my co-host. Omar, thank you very much for yeah. That's all. Oma and the and the and the the um. Thank you, Oma, as well, and to the also to the um, to the guests that you had, Ruth. You know, it was they were really great as well. They had so much um, really great insight. Um, yeah. So that was that was really cool. So I, I do recommend that you go check it out. I will also say I think there were like sixty some people in the Twitter space. If I'm not yeah, mistaken. and two hundred and something people tuned in. So that's interesting. Yeah. So absolutely amazing. So thank you, and <laughs> let's do these whenever because they were great. 
Yeah, we'll, we'll keep doing some. I think we'll do in the next quarter as well. Um, yeah. Because I see from the Twitter space, a couple of people that joined did not really know what open source was about. And that was not really the focus of the space. So I didn't want to digress into that. So we'll, you know, do Twitter spaces about, you know, getting people involved in open source and all that stuff. So yeah, we'll do more of it. Oh, congratulations to both of you. That was amazing. So that was it. That was all I had to, that was to the agenda, just making sure we talked about that. Okay. Uh, I think we have um, our facility to tell, our facility to sorted out. Um, oh yeah, I added that to that space. It was really cool. Thank you so much, Ruth, for trying to like get more Africans in open source and chaos. Like, so, um, I don't think there's any other things to talk about on the agenda. So do we do we end this? I think we're close. Yep, we we can end. It's like. <laughs> It's totally okay. <laughs> okay. All right, everybody. Have a nice day. Thank you so much for the amazing work. Thank you all. See yeah, you. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. Have a great week.